Okay, students, this is a guide on how to write the actual essay, the research paper, or how to get started with the writing process. And so I want to point out a couple of things for you. First of all, in the content folder and general writing tips, there are there's access to two different types of outlines down here. Okay, and then more outline tips is another one. This one is just, uh, you don't have to have this cover page, don't worry about that. But this is a basic outline, okay? You would have to modify it so that it is connected to your topic. This is talking about uh, cell phones and traffic accidents, which is a controversial issue right now. And so you can use this to help you get started, okay? Now you do not have to write an outline. It's just helpful to get your thoughts down, get your sources organized, and see where you're headed. And to make sure you have all the parts of an essay. Okay, here's the other example of an outline. It's just real vague, um, but this may help you. The main points would be the topic sentences of each body paragraph. And for this research paper, it would be maybe uh, one of the reasons behind um, the issue, one of the causes of the issue, and so that would be your topic sentence. Your examples, details, explanations could be your uh, support. Okay, and then, <coughs> excuse me, in the research folder is another example of an outline. It's a bit more specific to research, current issues, outline, example. And I'll just show this to you real fast, but Again, you don't have to do one. This one is for if you had to do one, so it's very formal, it has a heading. But you would have an introduction that defines the topic or the issue, it explains it, and then you have your claim. What is your opinion about the issue? Okay, uh, another paragraph would have the background information, like why is this a problem, who does it affect, what's the history behind the issue, and so you may have some research elements here, but basically you're just giving us background information about your topic and you're trying to explain why it's important. Why do we need to even talk about it right now? Okay. And then finally you start with the body paragraphs. And each body paragraph would be the main point, a major point, one cause or reason. Okay. And here's an example. So like if I was uh, going to do research on childhood illiteracy and the negative effects that it has today in American society. One of the factors may be that um, parents don't read. Children are living with uneducated parents. They're living in houses without books. And so I would do some research on that to prove that that's an issue. Okay. I want to point out that you to make sure that your sources are cited properly and embedded properly in your essay. That is key. You have to embed your evidence properly. You cannot just plop long bits of evidence into the page. And we've kind of been dealing with that all semester. So I want to show you a tool for that in the research uh, folder that is helpful. It is called the They Say I Say template right here. Now, the only problem is you have to read my instructions. These are the templates, okay? They're very vague, very generic. You can basically fill in your citation here where the quotations are. Fill in the blanks. Now, if you do this, this is fine. But you would, I would not do this word for word. You have to edit this. Make it um, unique and not repetitive, okay? So when you introduce the quotation, you just find the evidence and you put it in there and you talk about who's saying it, okay? You explain the quotation, why it matters, how is it relevant to your topic or issue, and then you argue with it, using it as support. You can disagree with what this person has said, agree with what he has said, or both. Now, here's an example. Here's the original quotation from an online database. See, it's long, it's wordy. I've just popped down the entire quotation in the middle of a page. 
If I wrote an essay like that, it would not be a good essay. It would not be a strong, fluent argument. And so I have to embed it properly. And here is how I've embedded it using the um, template. So like the first sentence is, writing in the academic journal, preventing obesity, Alan Greenblatt emphasizes, and there I have my embedded text. That is the main part I get from right here. Okay? That has doubled in the past decade. Then I add another piece of evidence. I have two evidences in a row. You can do that. Like I said, these templates are not a straight jacket. It's just some kind of guide to make sure your writing is smooth and clear. So I've added, I used another introducing the quotation and added the text right here. Here, he argues, he writes, but I've changed it. I don't want to say he writes, he writes, he writes, he writes. So I said he asserts that much of the problem stems from, there's my quotation. Okay, so I have two quotes here. And then here I explain it. So what does it mean? And then I go into, um, basically he's arguing this. That's this template right here. Explaining the quotation. Basically, Greenblatt argues this. So that's where you answer, what does it mean? I'm interpreting his evidence and putting it into my own words. And then I argue. Okay, here's my argument. All of this is me. Okay. My insight, my opinion, my analysis. And then I go on to... I, my support again and you kind of just repeat the process where you embed the evidence explain what it means argue why it matters okay here you go please read the fine print or these bolded statements very carefully it tells you yes the templates do say I agree I disagree but in a formal essay you're not supposed to say I and so you need to edit that out okay this one example right here is part of a paragraph I'm just dealing with the textual evidence. I would still need a topic sentence, which introduces the reason for my argument, and I would need a concluding sentence, and then maybe even another chunk of te uh, evidence and analysis. So read this carefully. Use it. It helps you write better. It helps you embed the evidence better. It helps you connect with the evidence better. Just make sure you do some revision and you're not repetitive. Okay, thank you.